Hello again. Um, this is probably my last video on the Arduino and signaling for a while, um, just because I think uh, I've exhausted my ideas uh, and I'm quite happy with what I've done to date and I can get on with my own layout in, in updating my signaling. But I thought I'd have a look at block signaling and whether the Arduino could do it. I'm sure it can, it's just whether I can get it to do it. Uh, block signaling, um, if you're not familiar with it, it's where your track is broken down into a number of blocks and each block um, potentially should only ever have one train in that block. And the way that is usually protected is via a number of signals. And if you look at this diagram here, it gives you an illustration of how it would work with four aspect signals. Um, when signal one is passed at green, it goes to red. And then that sequence is followed to till it gets to signal number four. So when a train passes signal number four, uh, the signal goes red. The one preceding it, signal three, goes to amber. The one preceding that, number two goes to double amber and the one preceding that number one which is the first signal would pass goes back to green of course that's four aspect um, on my layout i've only got three aspect and i wondered about whether that's feasible to recreate on the arduino and i think going back to our very early videos where we looked at how many pins we had with three aspect block signaling that's perfectly doable but four aspect signaling in you start to run into trouble with the number of pins you have. Um, obviously there is a solution to that as I discussed in my last video and that is via this Charlie Plexin, but that's a whole different ball game. So I thought I'd um, have a look at this. Um, it, I've, I've written a sort of quite a basic um, sketch in, our, in the Arduino, which I'll, I'll, we'll have a look at, uh, which, which I think does most of the things I need to do and I'll show you that now. So if you want to have a go at this, I'll leave a link in the uh, the comments for this to be downloaded as per my other videos. Uh, and what I've done is, um, if you remember my previous videos where I created a little chart to tell you which pin did which, well, this at the start of every one of the, the sketches, the programs, it, it, it lists that anyway. So I'm not going to bother creating a chart and I'm just going to run through the, uh, the de definitions in the actual sketch itself. So for argument's sake, if we look at this bit here, it says define, it says train detection pin one, and that is pin number two. So pin two on your Arduino is where your train detection starts by going in. Uh, pin three is, a for, is a for signal one green. Pin four is amber for signal one. Pin five is red for signal one, and so on. So for each signal, I've got a, dete a detection, a green, an amber, and a red pin, because we're not having double amber. Again, this is signal number two and finally signal number three uh, and if you look at my my comments that tells you what all those pins are actually doing uh, and then i've got two two at the end um I've, I've thought about having a reset switch so that if if things start to go a bit odd with the uh the block signaling you can just press the reset switch and it will turn everything back to 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 where it started in in essence uh, and finally, uh, I've put an override switch in so that if if you fancied it, rather than having green aspects showing when there's no trains, you could turn them to red if you wanted to. Um, that is it, pretty much. Um, I don't really think there's much else on here that you need to particularly worry about. There's our lamp test. It, it's quite straightforward, really, um, and it's probably a bit basic, but it, it does what I wanted it to do, so... Uh, I didn't really want to make it any more complicated than that. So let's go and have a look at my Arduino and see how that's set up. So there's my Arduino. Um, standard issue rules apply. All this cabling goes into the pins as per the um, the sketch I just showed you. Um, and I'm using the old, good old um, detectors with the single pin and a five volt and a ground supply. Uh, and, and the way I've done this is, is pretty straightforward really all I've done is is I've put three signals in a, in a line and each signal has its own detector right next next door to it um, I've got an override switch and I've got my little reset switch here so in theory when I turn this on uh, what should happen is the signal should go through their little startup sequence and they should be then ready to detect any trains so what I'll do now is I'll put this in my little holder and I'll turn it on. Right, as per normal, let's turn on and the signal should go for their little start-up sequence to test that all the lamps are working. So here we go. Oh, 
Okay, that's good, first of all. Right, so first test we're gonna do, we will just check the override switch works. They should all go to red. Excellent, and then override switch is off. Um, the reset switch will turn all the lights green, so we'll try that in a minute. So here's my train, and in theory what should happen is um, the detector here should detect the train, change the signal to red. Now it's in this block, so no other train should be allowed in that block. Next signal, signal number two, when the train passes that, that signal should go to red, and signal number one should go to amber. Like that. So train is now in the second block. And finally, when the train gets to the third signal, this signal number two will go to amber, and this signal will go back to green. Like that. Okay, that's easy. Uh, and what I've done is, uh, you could just leave it like that, but what I've tried to sort of add in is a bit of functionality so that, so that if the train's going around the loop and it comes back to where it started, in theory, when the train then passes the green signal again, the signal number three should go to amber and signal number two should go to green. So let's just try that. We on the track, we are. Okay, so signal number three is now amber, signal two is green, and signal one is red. Um, and if for some bizarre reason something got screwed up here, for argument's sake, um, train got derailed or it came off the track or whatever, pressing my reset switch should now set all them back to green. So we sort of start afresh, as it were. Like that. There we go. Brilliant. So there we go. Let's block signaling. Okay, that's it. That's all I need to say about that. Um, so I'm going to give you the sketch, have a, have a fiddle around with it and have a play. Um, seems to work on, on, the, on this sort of basic level. I haven't, I haven't made it too clever. So hopefully that's all it, all it really needs for, for a fairly straightforward um, operation of, of block signaling. Well, I hope that's been of use. Um, I think that's pretty much me finished now on Arduino and signaling for the moment. No doubt I'll come up with some other idea. Uh, but I think I'm now going to move on to my next project, which is to look at my uh, points, which I'm going to manually control. Hopefully see you then. Bye.